Tonight on the Black Channel, Biden and the boys realize that time is running out, so now they're throwing anything and everything at the wall, hoping that something's gonna stick. The Black Channel is live. Unapologetic. Unadulterated and absolutely uncompromising. Greetings, brothers and sisters from around the world, and welcome back to the home, the haven, the stronghold, and the everlasting super fortress of intelligent black thought. We are the black media, and this is the black channel. And I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the voice of Black America, the Black Authority, broadcasting to you live from the only historically black college university of higher education and learning in the cosmos. You are, of course, welcome to join us. And join us you shall, because on tonight's program here, you know, I have been telling you all for the longest time here that... As events begin to unfold and continue to unfold that the political parties were going to become unraveled, starting with the Democrats here. As we have been advising people that the real way of getting through this and dealing with things is simply to stay home. You not to allow people to play you and that if they are not giving you something to vote for, then you just need to go find something else to do with your time in the meantime. We've got other ways of dealing with our issues. So you start seeing this steady drum beat begin here. And I've been tracking this for a while, as you all know. You start to see this steady drum beat begin. Next thing you know, they start trying to throw things at people. They start trying to throw things. We have made it very clear that we are all about reparations across the board. We've made it very clear about that. They're trying to do anything and everything except do that. So let's just see if we can find any other issue we possibly can. Next thing you know here, just this week, oh boy, what do you know? After all this damn time, the Justice Department, well, let me go ahead and just read the story here to you from none other than Vice News, which by the way, if the Justice Department really wants to investigate somebody, they should probably start there. But... Since apparently offering student loan forgiveness to certain people hasn't really been lighting anybody's fire, well, guess what just happened all of a sudden? Cops tied to Breonna Taylor's death arrested and charged. The DOJ, Department of Justice, has charged four current and former Louisville police officers, sources told Vice News, Brett Hankinson, Joshua Jaynes, Kelly Hanna, Goodlett, and Kyle Meany. The FBI arrested current and former Louisville Metro police officers who were somehow involved in the deadly raid that killed 26-year-old Breonna Taylor, according to multiple sources. Somehow. All right. The three officers who were taken into custody Thursday morning include former detectives Brett Hankinson and Joshua Jaynes, as well as Sergeant Kyle Meany, Detective Kelly Hannah Godlett, was not arrested but has been charged. The Department of Justice confirmed the charges in a press conference Thursday morning during which U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland elaborated on the charges. They include two counts of deprivation of civil rights against Hankinson for firing 10 shots through a window and glass door along the side of Taylor's apartment. The three other officers, James, Goodlett, and Meany, have been charged with conspiracy for violating Taylor's Fourth Amendment rights due to their roles in drafting and submitting a false affidavit used to secure a search warrant for Taylor's residence in a drug-related investigation. Now, here's the part I want you to remember is this next paragraph. No officers have been directly charged with Taylor's death, including the officer who shot her, Miles Cosgrove, although he was fired nine months after the deadly raid. So, by the way, just in case you thought something slick was happening here, by the way, they are not actually charging 
the police for anything directly related to her death. They're not actually charging them for anything directly related to her death. They're not charging for that. Breonna Taylor should be alive today. Attorney General Mary Garland said Thursday, um, Breonna Taylor's killers should all be indicted for murdering her, Mr. Garland, today. Hankinson was not part of the original inv initial investigation that led to the search warrant of Taylor's apartment, but he played a pivotal role in the execution of the warrant during which she was killed. He was fired in the summer of 2020 for what the department described as a, quote, extreme indifference to the value of human life and then charged by the Kentucky Attorney General's office on three counts of wanted endangerment for bullets that went into the apartment at, of one of Taylor's neighbors. Hankinson was acquitted earlier this year. The charges against the three former officers include not only allegations of falsifying information, but an attempted cover-up after the fact. Janes and Goodlett met up in a garage in May 2020, two months after Taylor's death, and agreed to tell investigators a false story, according to the DOJ. Janes, who was responsible for filling out the warrant, was fired by the Louisville Metro Police Department in 2020 after officials concluded that he had lied in the affidavit. Janes wrote that he had verified through the postal inspector that Jamarcus Glover, Taylor's ex-boyfriend, a suspected drug dealer and the main target of the police investigation, was receiving suspicious packages at her address. But that claim was refuted by both the postal inspector and Jane's colleagues. Now, people, do you remember for all these years now, you've had your white supremacists, right wingers, Fox News and all these other people claiming up and down that there was justification to go to her apartment. Remember, they were all saying that up until this point. They were all saying that then. They were all telling anybody who would listen that, oh, it was the police didn't just go there for nothing. Why she was doing a bunch of it. She was dealing drugs out of the apartment. All kinds of all kinds of nefarious activities. Remember, they've been saying that for years now. And it was only we here in the black media who were saying that's a lie. That the information was coming out and the postal inspector had made it clear. Yeah, they contacted us, but we told them nothing suspicious going on there. Nothing suspicious. So they just made it up. When they didn't have any facts to back it up, they just made up, okay, well, we're white and we say so, so let it ride. Let it ride. We've been saying for years that that was not true. We have been saying for years, we specifically pointed out about the postal inspector. We've been saying it for years. Your corporate media, MSNBC, all of them, dead silent. Dead silent. They weren't saying any of this. Now, years later, all of a sudden, they're starting to talk about all the things that we've been saying the whole time. Everything we were saying the whole time. That her ex-boyfriend wasn't there. She didn't have anything to do with him. They claimed that he was getting suspicious packages at her address. The postal inspector said that's not true. So the ex-boyfriend wasn't there. And anything that he had that might have been going there, there wasn't anything suspicious going on. Yes, the Attorney General of Kentucky, their bought and paid for token, Cameron, he certainly needs to be indicted as well. Now, it goes on to say here that Jane's arrest was reported by local station WDRB earlier Thursday morning. Godlet, who helped fill out the warrant and worked on the same small team that led the investigation, has been on leave since early 2021. When a probe was opened into allegations that she and several other officers had thrown drinks at Louisville residents from their police vehicles. Really? Meany, the sergeant, and now let me go back here to this previous paragraph here. I want you all to understand here, this is years later. This is years later. This one guy here, James, made a false affidavit. That false affidavit cost Brianna Taylor her life. Let me say that again. 
that false affidavit cost Brianna Taylor her life. That was not a victimless crime. That wasn't just a, well, you know, you kind of overstepped your boundaries. That's not a paperwork issue. That false affidavit directly caused Breonna Taylor's murder. That false affidavit was not harmless. That false affidavit is what opened the door and paved the way for them to kill her. It opened the door and paved the way. So when you hear about that false affidavit thing, when we talk about the post office and the postal inspectors, if you want to know why it is that in the black media, we have been banging on that one so hard is because that was what allowed them to go and murder her. That affidavit. They didn't have anything on them, so they just made it up. And then they showed up and started gunning people down because dead women tell no tales. And let's be clear, they went in there to do a rub out of everybody. They were there to kill Brianna, her boyfriend. They were there to murder everyone. It just didn't work. They were too incompetent and inept. But it's not because they had, because that wasn't what their intention. Their intention was to kill everyone. Now they go on to say here, Meany, the sergeant in charge of Godlet and Jane's team, was responsible for overseeing the investigation, including vetting affidavits and search warrants submitted by his team. Assistant Attorney General Kristen Clark confirmed that these charges are separate from the DOJ's ongoing investigations whether the Louisville Metro Police Department has, quote, patterns and practices of violating citizens' rights. Don't look for Kristen Clark to do anything. She's been a useless doorstop. She's a useless paperweight, so don't look for her to do anything. So what you're finding out here is that everything we told you here before is absolutely true. Now, why in the hell did it take all this damn time? There is nothing that the Department of Justice learned in the last six months that they didn't know in the previous two years. There is nothing that they just found out in the last two months that they didn't know in the previous two years. The only thing that's changed is that the Democrats' ability to win the election has tanked and their black support has vaporized. That's the only thing that has changed. And now all of a sudden, Breonna Taylor's killers are getting indicted for everything except killing her they have been indicted for everything except killing her they've been indicted for everything except that Merrick Garland and Joe Biden have indicted them for everything but killing her that's not accidental that's not accidental Sitting up here and giving grand gestures and then at the last second, oh, we can't do anything more there. That's the way in which they play the game with us. That's the way they play the game with us. Of course, I could mention about Brittany Griner. I mean, I could, but you get the idea. Brittany, if Brittany was wondering whether she was, what was she most what was the priority the society takes about her you being a woman you being lgbt or you being black well britney found out the hard way what she is she's over there in russia and yeah she's over there in russia and that's a wrap on that now isn't it she's over there in russia and that is a wrap on that They threw the damn gavel straight at her head. Here you go. I need you to hold this decade. I need you to go ahead and hold this decade is what we need you to do. We need you to do that. For empty vape cartridges. Now, 
For those of you, if you hadn't seen it, if you hadn't seen it, the rapper Boosie has something to say. And I thought I had shared this on my timeline, but I guess that I didn't there, but I thought I had shared that. But the rapper Boosie has something to say about that in particular there. And I thought that was very poignant because right now you have a situation where these folks are going to try to convince you that everybody knows or that everybody's on the same page about these things. And that's not so. That's not so. They're doing these things for a reason. And the last thing in the world they want is some of that negative publicity there. So this is what Boosie had to say. And you know, Boosie is not good for holding his tongue on anything. He was a little lit. You can, you can look in his eyes and see, okay, Boosie was a little lit, but yeah, he had something. He had no filter. How the hell this girl get nine years for a weed pen? And the USA ain't doing nothing about it. You tell me that. If that was Taylor Swift, it'll be a peace treaty right now. It'll be a, a slight, we'll be, they'll be drafting to go to war. For a weed pen. Nine years. What that show for black women in the United States and the vice president as a black woman, you supposed to be on the front line. You supposed to be, are you supposed to be on the front line to get that black woman out of jail? Nine damn years. Y'all fucked up in this world. I know that Kamala Harris is unhappy because old Boosie had to sit there and say that. You supposed to be on the front line. You supposed to. What that show for black women in nine years? What that show for black women in the United States? And the vice president, as a black woman, you supposed to be on the front line. You supposed to be are you supposed to be on the front line to get that black woman out of jail. So I don't know if Brittany Griner identifies as black. We already know that Kamala doesn't identify as black unless there's a vote to be gained from it. But uh yeah, Boosie show did put her on the hot seat about that now, didn't he? She's show on the hot seat now. Wasn't what she was looking for. She was hoping for something different. Next thing you know, somebody's come along, a wild card has come along and put the spotlight on you. How the hell are you sitting there with Joe Biden and breaking bread every day? How in the world is that the case? How are you sitting there breaking bread with Joe Biden every day? And yet, Brittany Griner is sitting where? And Kamala ain't lighting no fires. She's not kicking up no dust. Keep in mind, AOC, when Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez was unhappy, she's like, I don't know if I can support Biden for the midterm. I don't know if I can support him for the next election. I don't know. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I can do that. Bernie Sanders, I don't know if I can support Biden in 2024. Don't know if I can do that. I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to figure it out here. Senator Manchin, I don't know if I can support Biden in 2024. Not so sure about that. Don't know if I can do that. Kamala Harris chirps. Crickets chirping. If those of you, if you were wondering, if you were wondering whether or not what I told you last week was relevant, if you were wondering whether or not what I said to you last week, if you were wondering whether or not 
The broadcast I did last week reminding you about the level of support that Joe Biden does not have even among Democrats. If you were wondering why I was doing that, it's so he can put this into proper perspective for you. So when Boosie says something like what he said, then you realize, well, I'll be damned because you know it's other Democrats who've done come out and said, yeah, I don't know if I can support Biden for the next election. I don't know if I can support him in 2024. I don't know if I can do that. So by putting the spotlight on Kamala right now, it's very, very clear. This is the whole point we've been making the whole damn time. As a vice president, she doesn't have to make legislation. But she's supposed to be speaking out when it comes to LGBT and illegals and everything else except black folks. She can speak up. All of a sudden, you ain't speaking. Yeah, it's, it's, it's put you in the hot seat. It's put her in the hot seat. Tough ass spot for you to be in. You thought you were going to fly below the radar. Now all of a sudden you're center stage. Now all of a sudden you're center stage with yet another failure of black people and particularly a black female that you have to answer for. Why in the world are you so damn silent over there? Why are you so damn quiet? Shouldn't you be saying something? Why in the hell are you so quiet over there? You think you're going to come back in 2024 or 2028 and clean this up? If you all agree with what you're hearing here tonight, give me a thumbs up emoji in the chat room. And go ahead and hit my likes for me here. If folks aren't liking what they're hearing tonight, I'll go ahead and shut things down early, but... If you like what you're hearing here tonight, give me the thumb. If I'm telling the truth, hit me with the thumbs up in the chat room and hit the likes button for me. That's what we want to see here. Kamala Harris is like, oh, I'm doing real good right now. Messed around. Let things go a certain way. Messed around. Let things go a certain way. Next thing you know, she's like, oh, hell, what are we supposed to do about this? What are we supposed to do about this? Can't really say anything. Can't really say anything. Oh, no, it's not that she's been quiet now. It's not that that's been the case. Oh, Kamala has not been quiet. Oh, she certainly hasn't been quiet. Now, keep in mind that Boosie here posted his video on August 4th. It isn't that Kamala Harris has been quiet. She's been speaking up. She has been speaking up now. Let me be very, very clear. She has been talking. She has been talking. Just not necessarily saying anything that you would think there. Well, Jason, what did she say? I'm so glad you asked. July 31st. Oh, I know Kamala right now. She's breaking out the Gaviscon right now. Hey, Kamala, I got a few things to remind you of here. July 31st. Why her priority are the midterm elections. Vote for me so I can do more nothing for you. We're 100 days until the midterms. Ma'am, I wouldn't be reminding people if I were you. The passing of Nichelle Nichols. Oh, what do you know here? August 1st. August 1st, her and... I forget the guy's name. His name Doug, whatever his name is. They're her and her husband are doing important things. Talking about volunteering. She looks so damn grandmotherly and lost. At August 1st, as climate crisis, as the climate crisis gets worse, extreme weather will pose a rapidly growing danger to more and more communities. I announced that we are investing more than a billion dollars through FEMA to fund climate resilience projects in 343 cities, towns, and countries around our nation. 
The August 1st again, the House of Representatives passed legislation that would put into law protections for same-sex and interracial marriage. I guess that's her contribution to help Brittany Griner. I guess that's her contribution to help them. Oh, look at this. August 2nd, we can make a difference in the outcome of midterms. Let's roll up our sleeves and get to work. Well, I wonder what Kamala wants to talk about here. Hey, let me go ahead and crank up the volume. I wonder what she was talking about. I'd be interested to hear. What we are supposed to stand for, everything we do matters. We are seeing extremist so-called leaders around the country at a local, state, and federal level who are pushing an agenda that is about the restriction of rights instead of what we are supposed to stand for, which is about progress and the expansion of rights. We understand what we stand for, so we know what to fight for. Boy, she sounds so nagging. She is like the nagging ex-wife that everybody would want to divorce. She is that nagging aunt that everybody would want to get away from there. Well, nothing for Brittany Griner there. Okay, August 2nd, um, Karen Bass. I'm happy to get the endorsement of Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. Now, if you lose, you'll be upset. Um, Let's see here. August 2nd. No matter how much they earn, every person in our nation should be able to afford a high-speed internet plan. Oh, good. More Obama broadband. So this is Obama broadband. So if you want to know, they want to help all the thoughts out there be able to shake their butts on Instagram. So she wants to make sure they can do that because they they can go tax them, by the way. She wants to make sure they can do that. I'm not joking. I'm not being facetious. They want to make sure more of them have access to the internet. So it's like, okay, get your OnlyFans popping so we can go ahead and start taxing you. No, I'm not joking. I'm not being facetious. That's exactly what it is. August 2nd, the Inflation Reduction Act would re- invest nearly $370 billion in clean energy, zero emission vehicles, environmental justice, and more. Yeah, the, you, where's the money for reparations? There it is right there. Yeah, here it is right here. This, this is our reparations money right here. It sure is. Here's our reparations money right here. August 2nd, too many of our veterans and their families have long waited for this day. With today's passage of the PACT Act, our veterans will finally see an expansion of the health care benefits and proper care for burn pit exposure. They deserve it. Okay. August 3rd, the people of Kansas won a victory for freedom and liberty by standing with the majority of Americans who support a woman's right to make decisions about her own body. So she's back to this abortion stuff again. She wants to make sure that you get rid of as many black babies as possible. Why do the midterm elections matter? Who your secretary of state is matters. Who your governor is matters. Who your mayor is matters. Not to mention who are the members of Congress. So much will be at stake. 5,000 likes since yesterday. 5,000 likes since yesterday. Remember Boosie posted his video on August 4th. So if you'll notice here between August 3rd and August 5th, Kamala Harris on her personal Twitter page, she didn't say nothing. Boosie posted up here on August 4th. Kamala Harris didn't say a damn thing. On August 4th, she was a no-show. She comes back and all of a sudden, she's talking about midterm elections. Did you all notice that? Do you think that's a coincidence? Is that a coincidence to you? Was that a coincidence to you? Well, maybe she's just late getting to it. August 5th, this morning's jobs report shows our economy added 528,000 jobs in July and the unemployment rate matches the lowest it's been in more than 50 years. More people are working than ever before. We have more to do, but today's jobs report shows we are making significant progress. The problem isn't people having jobs, ma'am. The problem is they can't afford nothing with the jobs they have because you all have let the prices of everything spiral out of control. The Inflation Reduction Act would lower health insurance costs by an average of $800 yearly for 13 million Americans. You're in a country of over 300 million Americans. It would also reduce the cost of prescription drugs, reduce the deficit, address the climate crisis, and create jobs. Let's send it to President Biden's desk. This woman is out of touch and out of her mind. Take a look at the number of likes you got for that. You're out of touch and out of your mind. Oh, take a look at this. Another video here, August 5th. Wonder what she's talking about. They said this is not a partisan issue. 
The women of America should not be the subject of partisan debate or perspective. The people of Kansas spoke and said this is a matter of defense of basic principles of liberty. Okay, so you're not doing nothing for the people, so let's talk about abortion, a non-issue. The Chips and Science Act will boost the production of American-made, American-manufactured semiconductor chips, helping bring down the cost of cell phones, computers, and cars. It will have a profound impact on American families. Now, folks, I want you to understand something about this thing that she just mentioned here right now, the so-called Chips Act here. I want you to understand what you're looking at. I want you to understand what that actually is about. Now, for those of you who don't remember, back in the 1970s, 1980s, you had a situation here where uh, the, uh, the semiconductor industry was started and began in the United States. The semiconductor industry started and began here. America is where it started and began. And over the course of the last 40 years, corporate America has taken it upon themselves to outsource everything because they didn't want black folk to get a leg up on anything. They outsourced every damn thing, sent it overseas. The capacity to make semiconductor chips now primarily rests in Korea and Taiwan. South Korea and Taiwan between Samsung and TSMC. So they outsourced all that work over there. They outsourced the capacity over there. And these fortune 500 companies, the CEOs have made scandals, uh, just made scads of money, scads of money. And now that they've gutted the technology sector and sold it out. They're now coming back 40 years later and saying, Hey, if the U S government would help subsidize, if the U S government would just help subsidize what we outsourced, why we could help bring more of it back. So guess what? Now they put together a package of $52 billion dollars. For the purposes of boosting semiconductor manufacturing in the United States, which is where semiconducting manufacturing began. The corporations have made hundreds of billions of dollars and now they got the U.S. taxpayers, you and me, footing the cost to bring that capacity, to subsidize paying them to bring that capacity back to America. Now, if you'll all remember back in the 1980s, Ronald Reagan was talking about welfare queens, welfare queens, welfare queens. America has never paid as much in welfare as these folks, as these major corporations are getting. This is a scam. America has never paid as much in welfare, WIC or anything else as these corporations have been getting. Never. Never. This is basically blackmail. You're paying them to bring back a semiconductor industry that they shipped overseas. Now they made money shipping it overseas. Now you're going to pay them a bunch of money to bring it back. And guess what? In 20 years, they'll start sending it back overseas again. In 20 years, they'll start begin sending it back overseas again. Rinse and repeat. Just like you see with the automotive industry. You gave them a bunch of incentives to build it here. They started outsourcing it overseas. Now you got the government, local government, state governments, federal government, giving incentives to have them bring it back over here. They make billions and hundreds of billions of dollars coming and going. Now, if you had black folk trying this, they'd have all of us on trial and in prison. If we tried that. Kamala Harris is telling you this is a great thing. It's a damn scam. That was August 5th, yesterday. 
August 5th, the work happening in Massachusetts is a model for the rest of the country, a bipartisan effort protecting abortion. Here she goes back to abortion. Somebody there at the White House told them, hey, this is an issue we can actually run on here because we ain't got nothing else. So here she's back to abortion again. A woman who can't give birth to anything except a bad idea is worrying about abortion. Never mind that the fact that her vice presidency is an abortion. August 8th, I mean, sorry, the eight hours ago, let's be clear. We trust the judgment of the women of America to make decisions based on what is in their best interest. We trust the women of America to make those decisions about their own bodies. The government should not be making that decision for them. Let me get this straight now. Brittany Griner is cooling her heels, rotting away in a Russian jail cell as we speak. This is the loudest voice speaking up for Brittany Griner right now. This, what you see on the screen, this is the loudest voice that has been speaking up for Brittany Griner. Meanwhile, over here, your actual elected female elected official who's so worried about women, crickets. Complete and total silence. Complete and total silence. You better take that seriously. If you're one of the damn Biden sexuals, one of the Biden butt kissers out here. Think about that for a few moments. See, this is the damn psychological head fake they play. She's t- talking to you as if she's so concerned about women and that woman is over there rotting in a jail cell as we speak for two empty vape cartridges. Empty vape cartridges. She didn't even have any marijuana, any actual marijuana with her. Just some vape cartridges. Here she goes on to say, the freedom and liberty to kill your babies. That's the only damn thing she's talking about. Freedom and liberty. I want you all to listen to what she has to say for a moment. If you want to hear a psychological whack job. For voting rights, fighting. Yeah, let's bring together the folks that have been fighting for voting rights, fighting for reproductive rights. Let's bring folks together, seeing how much we have in common to fuel this movement. Because right now, There is a full-on attack on freedom and liberty. I think Brittany Griner would agree, ma'am. Attack. Because right now, there is a full-on attack on freedom and liberty in America on these issues. And I say, take back the flag. Freedom and liberty? That's what we fight for. Freedom and liberty. And I want to put this image on your screen so that you all can hear Kamala Harris telling you that she's all worried about freedom and liberty. And Brittany Griner is in a Russian jail cell saying, ho, please. Freedom and liberty. Can you come spread some of that over here? Brittany Griner could use a little bit of this pretend freedom and liberty that Kamala Harris is hollering about, by the way. But I'm not done yet because I have one more to show you. And I'm going to tell you, hang on to your blood pressure when you see this one. The Affordable Connectivity Program provides working families up to $30 a month off their internet bill or $75 a month for those living on tribal lands. Did you get that? Did you hear that? 
Now, somebody go find your so-called Democrat pollsters and your so-called Democrat um, research analysts who told you that, well, folks ain't really interested in supporting reparation for black people. That not, you know what the number one issue is? It's going to be housing. It's going to be housing and health care. Okay, then where are the people who said, you know, you know, we really need to get some internet here and subside on tribal lands, those independent tribal lands that, you know, have all the casinos and everything. Brittany Griner is sitting somewhere saying, what the hell? What the hell? That's not a joke when you see that kind of thing. That's not a joke when they're saying that. They're letting you know, oh, hell no, we're, 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 we're putting the boots to every damn body. We're putting the boots to every damn one. That's something I want you to think about there. They're letting you know exactly what they feel about that. And you're just going to be left behind over here. You're going to be left behind. They're letting you know, hey, we're getting everybody else a leg up on this. We want to make sure they got that. We want to make sure that everyone here has uh, has what they need for that. We're going to make sure of that. We're going to make sure of that. It's not a joke when you see that kind of thing occurring. While they tell us that there's no money and there's no interest, there's no political interest in doing anything for black people. There's no interest. There's no money to fund it. And there's no interest in pushing the agenda. There's no support for reparations for black people. Why we did a poll we allegedly did a poll and when we did that poll why we determined that there isn't enough support that nobody is really supporting doing anything specifically for black people so it ain't there that's the reason that we're not doing it we're not doing it because there's not really any support for that Apparently, there's support for subsidizing hooking up internet on tribal lands. Now, I want to tell you all what the reason is for the government wanting to put up internet support on tribal lands. Because if the government does it, then the government will own it. Or the government will have jurisdiction. If the government is paying for this, the government is automatically going to have jurisdiction. So just uh, trust and believe and understand that if they are paying for it, they will have jurisdiction. But think about that for a moment here. How many internet plans actually cost $75 a month? How many of y'all got high speed internet that costs $75 a month unless you got a really fast speed, unless you're trying to, just trying to pay for the top speed. They just sitting up here saying, hey, let's go ahead and just go all out. Understand something. I told you from the very beginning, they're trying to bolster as many people as they can, as quickly as they can. They are trying to bolster as many people as they can, as quickly as they can. To try to get them as far ahead of black people as fast as they can. But they know that everybody needs to have it subsidized. If they have to get out here and compete, then black folk will eventually catch up. So you've got to artificially keep them ahead. And this is how they intend to do that. This is how they intend to keep everybody else artificially ahead of black people. Every time you turn around, they're getting some freebie for something. Every time you turn around, they're getting something subsidized for something. And then they're telling us what they can't do. Right after they did that. Remember when I told you all here in 2020, when folk were saying, Jason, you know, they're doing all these vaccine mandates, vaccine mandates, Jason, the Joe Biden and vaccine mandates. And I told all of y'all, remember when I said, oh, don't worry, there won't be any vaccine mandates next year. Remember when I said that? 
I was the only voice anywhere. I was the only voice anywhere that specifically made the statement and specifically made the prediction that, by the way, there won't be any vaccine mandates. No talk of that in 2022. As a matter of fact, you are going to hear Joe Biden and Anthony Fauci come and tell you all that the pandemic is over in a few months. And sure enough, just a few months later, we flip over to 2022 and all of a sudden, both Joe Biden and Anthony Fauci were saying that the pandemic is settled. The pandemic is over. The threat has passed. No need for vaccine mandates. Well, Jason, how did you know that? Because the midterm elections are coming. And this is the most unpopular issue out there, those mandates. The midterm elections are coming. Watch Joe Biden back off for all of that. When he gets to 2024, he's going to swear up and down that his vaccine mandates and lockdowns and all this other crap was what saved the country and saved the world. You remember I said that. Well, guess what? Now they're trying to get some more mileage out of it. No less than the New York Times is now weighing in to say, oh, by the way, you know, you can believe anything we tell you here. U.S. job growth has accelerated in July across nearly all industries, restoring nationwide employment to its pre-pandemic level. Despite widespread expectations of a slowdown as the Fed raises interest rates to fight inflation. Folks. So what they're telling us is that the pandemic is over, or at least they're going to say that for now, as if they get reelected, if they survive the midterms, they're going to be right back telling you, oh, pandemic's still here, lockdowns for everybody. But guess what they're saying right now, that the pandemic is over, don't need any vaccine mandates, you don't need to mac- to uh, mask up, and as a matter of fact, the, the job market has recovered to its pre-pandemic levels. Everything's fine. Everything's great. Nothing to worry about. It's all good. Don't look at your housing prices, your gas prices, your food prices, your energy prices, your schooling prices. Don't look at your stocks. Don't look at any of that. Just believe us. Just believe us. The job market has recovered. The pandemic has receded. Everything's great. Everything's fine. Four more years. Go ahead and give us four more years. I told you all what was going to happen in 2022. I told you specifically and exactly what to expect. And I'll be damned if it's not breaking down exactly the way I said it would. You will not hear this type of accuracy in analysis from Bolin Martin. The defunct black news channel. I don't care what Byron Allen thinks he's going to do. You won't hear any of this from any of those other places. If you listen to them, you are so damn far behind the curve. It's not even funny anymore. We are here telling you what's going to happen before it occurs. So I, everybody asked me, Jason, what do you think is going to happen? What is Biden going to do? Do you think they're going to have a wake up call? And I said, no, what they're going to do. Remember, I've always said they're just going to try to double and triple down on what they're doing. What they're going to try to do is throw a few red herrings out there. See if they can distract us. See if they can fool us. But that's all they're going to do. They're not going to do anything else there. They're just going to see if they can throw a few crumbs off the table and distract you from what the hell is really happening. That's all they're going to do. And what do you know? They have gone right ahead and did exactly what I said. They're just trying to throw up some distractions now. Hey, here's some student loan money. Um... Hey, here's some high-speed internet for everybody. No, this is, is for everybody now. It's not for black folk. It's for everybody. Recognize the trick bag. It's not for black people. It's for everybody. Everybody. That's not accidental. It's not accidental. 
When they do these kinds of things, that means something. That means something. So these folks are doing that so that you understand, hey, we're going to help everybody else get their stuff together here. And you are going to be sitting on the outside looking in when we get done. That's where you'll be. So going forward, just understand this is the game plan. This is what they're going to do. No, they know exactly what we have been saying. If you are making money for, if you're making money available for damn me, uh, tribal homelands, if you're making money available to pay for internet on tribal lands, you know damn well about us and reparations. You know damn well about that. We don't have to tell them anything. They already know. Their job is to sit up here and convince us that we just need to try harder is what we need. Well, you know, they're just now we got the numbers. Well, there's just no support for it. Well, how do you figure that? Well, just trust us. We did a poll. We looked into it and we have decided that there's no support for what you're talking about. There's no support there. So, so sorry. That's just the way it is. There's no support for what you're talking about. Now, there's support for LG. If you would help us with abortion and LGBT. And, you know, if we we make a little money here for Internet services and we're going to make a little money for some Obama phones, we're going to do that right there. See, and that, that, that that's going to be a rising tide that's going to help everybody's. That's the game they're playing now. I warned you and I told you all from the very beginning that this is what it would be. Everything would just be crumbs and tokenism. That was all it was going to be. That was it. Now here it is. We're going to take a very brief commercial, non-commercial break. When we come back, we are going to take your phone calls. Before we do, I want to thank everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program here on PayPal or Cash App. So thank you very, uh, or Super Chat. So thank you here to my man, um, Mark, Andrew L, Najee, Ryan, um, Burkett, thank you very much for your support as well. Black Voltron and everybody else here who supported the program here, we appreciate your support for this tonight. We're going to go ahead and take a very brief commercial, non-commercial break. This is the Black Channel. Are you tired of being overcharged and forced into paying a monthly subscription for your Mac and Windows software? Well, if you are, currently we're having a 50% off discount on all the latest Mac and Windows software, such as AutoCAD, SolidWorks, Photoshop, Microsoft Office, and much more. Our 50% off discount will be ending soon, so be sure to text us Need Software to 323-407-8214. That's 323-407-8214. We aim to please, so expect 24-7 technical support, the latest premium software, instant software links delivered to your email, and PayPal's buyer's protection guarantee. influx of capital to grow your business. Spectra Capital Finance provides fast individualized working capital loans with lines of credit to take your business to the next level. SpectraCapitalFinance.com Hey, I'm Marcus. For a while, I walked around with this empty feeling inside. I had a full-time job, but <laughs> not in the field I wanted to be in. But then I came across this book where it was like, the title was just for me, Guide to Being Black in IT. I read the book and the author took me through scenarios and gave me tips. 
I sat down and read it and it only took an hour. After I got done, I took advice in the book, practiced in the labs and got certified. Then I literally got up and applied for a position with this company I've been looking at for a while and got the job. Thanks to that book, I worked my job with confidence. If you're looking to get into IT or even in the field, now this is a must read book. Go to www.beingblackinit.com. I am black first. I am empowered. I am on code. I am motivated. I am a proud foundational. My name is Naria Sellers, and nothing will come between us. Buy the sci fi novel, Nothing Will Come Between Us. Order today at Amazon and Google Play. Visit spiritof1811publishing.com. Our story, our family. Join 60s.net, a forum built to discuss all things relevant to black people. On our forum, a check doesn't mean you're famous. It means your blackness has been verified by our staff. Sorry, Chad. We also have premium merchandise with same-day shipping on most orders. And when you're ready for some dope content, check out the Zero Hour blog. Don't you sign up, post. I'm having a really good time with you tonight. I'm having a good time with you too. Want to go somewhere private? Just for us? I like that. Great. Meet me at sixzeros.net. Black owned, black operated. Hi, this is Brenda Starr, creator of Poetry with a Purpose and author of the book, Press But Not Crushed. Press But Not Crushed is an anthology of political poems that address current and historical issues in American descendants of slave population and African American population. The book describes slavery and its residuals, Jim Crow segregation, social depredation, and other relevant issues to American descendants of slaves and African Americans, including the current political climate that does not address our issues. This is the Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, the Black Authority. Very glad to be with you all here this evening. And as promised, the telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933, your personal access code to the black media. We are discussing tonight that Biden and the Democrats are throwing everything they can at the wall. Everything that we have predicted exactly the way I said it was going to come down. That is exactly what is happening now. They're doing everything. Do you need an abortion? Do you need some high speed Internet? What about them student loans there? Anything and everything except reparations. Why, you know what? We can move on getting Breonna Taylor's killers here now, even though we're not going to actually charge them with killing her. We're going to charge them with every other minor offense except killing her. Now, that we're not going to do here. But, you know, ain't that close enough? Ain't that good enough? No. It's not good enough for us. Therefore, the telephone lines are now open. The number is 646-787-1933. That's 646-787-1933. Thank you to everybody who has contributed to support tonight's program here on PayPal, Cash App, or Super Chat here. So DIY Queen, Nile Queen, thank you very much here. We appreciate that. Forever Forward, Nancy King, and everyone else who has um, Queen Nile and everybody else who has supported the program here. We appreciate that. We're going to go ahead and open up the phone lines here. So make sure you get on the phone. Make sure you are ready to talk here. I suggest you get in early for this. So let me get caller from area code 910. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, it's uh, Marcus from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Marcus from Fayetteville. What's on your mind? Yeah, a uh, quick question about as far as, uh, you know, well, I, I, I got, I want to make a statement first and I want to ask a question. Brittany, Brittany, uh, Brittany Griner is finding out now that, you know, that white supremacy is a global team sport. She's finding that out quite quickly. Obviously, we know about the young white lady that actually got off with more. I think she had more THC than she did, and she was sent back within two months. But she's finding that out quite quickly uh, in the LGBT community. I guess my question is to you, 
and uh, I want to, you know, uh, really get a good answer. I got a pretty good idea what's going to happen with all with the FBA nation and the B one nation being on code right now. And then, you know, we, we have this no vote thing that, you know, that we well, we just sit it out. We sit it out in November and we allow them to implode as we, as we pray they do, uh, as far as on in the Senate and the Congress, what, cause, cause always, whenever you have something like this, and this is always throughout history. Whenever you do an act, when you, when you, when you stand on your own two feet or you stand as one in unison, against a system like, you know, like white supremacy. Uh, and then you actually, uh, have a, uh, um, uh, a protest. There's always retribution. What would be the retribution in, in regards in, in far as in policy, how they would, how they're going to attack black people and policy. They already attacking us now, but how are they going to ramp it up? Like the Cajun Skeletor down in your area. Mr. Uh, well, I Clancy, mean, they're 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 uh, not Carville. right now. Remember, the policy is benign neglect. The whole goal right now yep. is, as Dr. Claude Anderson said, to maintain the status quo, to freeze things in place, to make sure that nothing ever changes again, so that there will be micro changes, but not macro changes. So they've already got you locked in box. They've already got you oppressed. The entire society is already a prison. You're trying to reverse that part of it. So the truth of the matter is they're really trying to maintain things where they are. Their whole strategy now is to scare us into believing that things can get worse. So it's really antithetical. It's counterintuitive from your question that you're asking because you say, okay, what are they going to do to punish us worse? That's the whole, uh, that's the whole issue. They've already got you in, as bad as they can do. They're trying to convince you that if you don't support them that, oh, it'll get worse. How the hell can it be worse than it is now? You've already got the ability to kill us with impunity. You have denied our human rights and basic rights. You're funding everybody except us. What the hell else do you have you can do? So just understand what that really is. It's about fooling you into believing that if you don't support them, we can get worse. No, you're already at worse now. Thank you very much for giving us a call. Let me get Call of Miracle 678. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? What's going on, Big Brother Jason? This is Maquez calling out of Conyers, Georgia. I'm Maquez out of Conyers. What's on your mind? Okay, so just to lay a quick foundation, I am a longtime listener. I love your broadcast. This is an A1 broadcast tonight. Um, if I don't catch your lives, I, while I'm at work driving these trucks, I go back and I, I, I play the recordings. You know what I'm saying? To get me through the day, I share and screen record your, your, your broadcast all the time and put them on all my social media platforms. Just to let you know, I'm FBA and I'm B1 all day. So just to get that out the way, there was a, a Twitter space you hosted not too long ago, right? And you allowed the people to, to chime in and talk. And I don't know what the heck happened, but you allowed me to speak. And when my, um, my microphone was turned on, there was some rumbling and a weird sound that came from the phone. And it's, it was some weird, I don't know, some voices coming through. And I was trying to figure out what the heck was happening on my phone. Your response, response was, okay, what the hell is this? I was confused as well. But then, you know, of course you, as expected, kicked me out of the call. And then I tried to go back to your page and I couldn't because I was blocked. I can screenshot you or email you my pages so you can see what my name is, so you can see that I've been a long-time listener and supporter of your broadcast. Long story short, I just don't want to be excluded from anything that you're posting on okay, Twitter, well, etc. And go, I'm wondering okay, if I can go get ahead and just unblocked. Go ahead and just email that to me, and we'll take a look into it for you. Just email me at theblackauthority@yahoo.com. Okay, cool. We'll take a look at that. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get caller from area code 571. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Shakir. I'm calling from Arlington, Virginia. Uh, Shakir from Arlington, Virginia. What's on your mind? There's a show called C-SPAN. And today they had two guests from the GRIO. And I called in. And I told them, I said, you know, the GRIO is not really as relevant. And then I, I said, do you know Jason Black? to read Nasheed and Professor Black Truth. And I said that they are more relevant than the Grio. And you know what the two people from the Grio said with the white host? Oh, they only appeal to a fringe element of the black community. They're not really that prominent. Well, I'd, so like, I to said, well, I'd like to see, I would actually like to see that. 
So if you have a link to that or a video of it, I'd like to see that. It's on. It was on C-SPAN. They have call names. Right. I, I know and, about. I know about it? that. My real thing is, if you have video of that or a link to that, send that to me at theblackauthorityyahoo.com. I'd like to see that. If that's something that really occurred and they really did say something like that, I'd be interested to hear um, what what the C-SPAN has to say on that. Thank you very much for giving us a call. That I would be interested to hear that. Sure. Go ahead and try that one. First of all, you're admitting everything we know, but go ahead and try that. So if that did occur, yeah, I'd be interested in hearing that. By the way, just in case you all want to know just how petty is getting out here at the Biden administration, they are so desperate to get your vote that now the FAA is asking for public feedback on airplane seat size. Oh, yeah, folks. I mean, they are doing everything to pander across the board, everything except reparations. Everything except reparations. Oh, student loans, we got you there. Ooh, want us to arrest Breonna Taylor's killers? We can go ahead and do that. Uh, Want a better size seat on the airplanes? We can take care of that for you here too. By the way, let me briefly go over that one here from CNN Travel. Briefly, because here's what you really need to know. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration is seeking comments from the public about the size of commercial airplane seats from a safe perspective quote the FAA invites public comments to assist the agency in determining what minimum dimensions of passenger seats may be necessary for safety including in particular airplane evacuation the request states what's not up for comment the feedback the agency is seeking is limited to safety concerns matters quote such as how the dimensions of passenger seats might relate to passenger comfort or convenience are not part of its request for comments, the FAA said in its Federal Register notes. So no, we'll talk about safety, but we are not concerned about your comfort. So in other words, this is just smoke and mirrors. People are supposed to just read the headlines and say, well, damn, the Biden administration is going to go after these airplanes, go after these airlines so they can go ahead. Yeah, they've been cramming us in these seats here all the time. Yeah, the Biden administration ain't going to do something about that. And they're telling you, oh, no, we're just we just want feedback for a study. We want the feedback so we can consider doing a study because that's what this is really about. Oh, you know, we want to study the matter. We want your feedback to study it. Let me know how that ends. Call from Erico 347. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? Shout outs to Jason's Black. This is Doombagger from East New York, Brooklyn. Hi, right, brother. What's on your mind? Hey, um, first of all, I'd like to say to you, brother, I appreciate your show. I recently discovered your show, man, roughly about three to four months ago. So, you know, basically... While I'm home from school, I've been basically trying to catch up and listen to a lot of the stuff that I've been 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 getting uh, exposed to there. there uh, but however, I was on your main channel, and last week, or I think the week prior, I, I think the, uh, you, uh, the the videos disappeared. So I was just trying to find out if it's okay, a possibility well, that that that, that, that was me back. who did that. So once we get that situation straightened out. Um, I may consider going ahead and opening back, that back up. Thank you very much for giving us a call. He's just now joining us here. But um, eventually, I'll see about getting that straightened out. They haven't looked at the appeal for the channel yet. So I'm going to make sure there's no more chicanery from them in the meantime. He's late. Call from area code 929. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Good evening, Jason. My name is Daryl from Chicago. Daryl from Chicago. What's on your mind? Jason, another excellent broadcast, as you, as you always put forth. Um, the last three broadcasts have led up to this one right now, and it's really been tremendously informative for those who are not listening and not following this bouncing ball. And, again, you were dead on about the Grindy, uh, grinders the situation there. And, like I said, she found out what, where she sits and where she stands. And um, that's it. That's nine years, which is almost, that's a decade. That's, you know, that's it. That's a done deal. And as far as the Democratic Party is concerned and Kamala Harris, you already predicted what was going to happen before she even said a word. And again, 
this is only the analysis that we're going to get. We're not going to get this anywhere else. We're not going to get it from other situations, not the CNNs and the NBAs, NBCs. I don't, I've never watched them. I've been a long time listening for nine years, and you're 10 years on as broadcasting. And I know that you've been on point. You've been not just telling the truth. You've been telling the factual truth. You helped out my nephews get themselves straightened out where they were confused about a few things. They hear it from adults, but when they hear it from another source and tell them the same thing, then they understand that this is how they got to line it up. And your, your, your tech show was excellent. Um, your information was excellent. Analysis, even on the business, the same thing. So, again, I just want to thank you for that. And I'm going to keep on listening and understanding. We understand where the ball, what is, where this is going to lead. We understand that they don't want to give us, they're trying their best not to find, to find any kind of way, shape, or form not to give us reparations. But it's going to end up a certain kind of way, and they ain't going to like it. I just want to thank you for that. Be one. You got our full support. Whatever you do, Jay, we're right there. We'll pull up with you. Thank Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight here. Let me get caller from area code 559. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where you calling from? My name is Martin. I'm calling from Fresno. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Martin from Fresno. What's on your mind? Well, um, Jason, excellent broadcast again today, as always. I appreciate you for that. Um, you made a really good point, and it stuck with me. I want to talk about a couple of things. One, you had said that there's your reparations check right there. When you were mentioning the fact that they come up with all of these other issues that they have to go take care of, and it ties into all your other broadcasts, like you said, that is our reparations check right there, environmental concerns and all this other BS. Um, furthermore, I was going to say about Breonna Taylor's death, um, there's all these people online talking about qualified immunity and what we need to do in order to change the law. I'm sorry. Okay. Nobody and said I, anything. Really nobody change. said anything, but give us the reader's digest version. Sure. Um, I'll skip that part and just go to my other part then, which is Brianna Taylor was murdered on the 13th, Friday the 13th, which is also the day that we went into COVID-19 um, as far as state of emergency with Donald Trump. And that's all I got to say. Thank you very much for giving us a call today. Let me get caller from area code 501. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Hey, this is Jamal calling from Little Rock. All right, Jamal from Little Rock. What's on your mind? Uh, real quick, I'd just like to point out that the uh, Boosie is adamant about getting Brittany Griner out of prison because she's black. Uh, the LGBT community tried to cancel Boosie because they called him homophobic not long ago. Uh, but we was hard-pressed to find any uh, LGBT or white feminist groups that was really doing anything to try to get Britney out besides blaming LeBron James or blaming some other black man or saying the WNBA need more money. So I'd just like to point out that uh, she was getting defended because of her blackness. And uh, homophobia didn't stop Boosie from being one of the main people screaming, trying to get her out. And that's it. Yeah, the so-called folks who really support you and whatnot, like they ain't getting nothing done. The loudest voices. There's a reason why they don't want you listening to them. They want you to sit up here and think that the folks that they want supporting you, that's the only one you can count on. Then when something actually happens and you find out, oh, hell, you put all your eggs in the basket of some folks who are not going to support you any which way. But then again, it always breaks down like this. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get a call from area code 267. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Okay, call from area code 267 has been abducted. Call from area code 424. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Carl calling from Fort Lauderdale. All right, Carl from Fort Lauderdale. What's on your mind? Yeah, sometimes these countries that oppose America, they like to uh, wave their finger at America also. So when they gave that um, sentence, sentence to um, Brittany Griner for nine years, sometimes they wag their finger like, hey, that's that's less than what you guys are giving out over there. We see guys getting life sentences for marijuana, like that black guy um, down there in Mississippi, uh, Alan Russell. I mean, that's that's the game they play in that regard, you know, because it's not like Russia is easy on folks and it's not like America is easy on folks. So it really becomes this symbolic dog and pony show. They only invoke black people when they want to thumb their nose at America, but it's not like they're doing any better. 
it's not like they have a, a pro-black position. It's not like they're any less racist. So you make a very good point in that regard. It's not like they're any different. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get caller Miracle 229. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Caller from Miracle 229 has been abducted. Caller from Miracle 662. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Uninvited guest, Verona, Mississippi. Okay, uninvited guest, what's on your mind? Have you noticed how late, how um, they've really been sending, letting, shipping the Mexicans from the border to D.C. and uh, New York, talking about the jobs available? They ain't letting none of them Haitians come through. Yes, yeah, somebody got their wake-up call on that. They told themselves that, you know, Oh, we're from the Caribbean and we got some out. There's going to be immigrant solidarity. That's what they told them. They found out the hard way. No, and you're on you, your own. Do you think, and he, they're giving them them temporary passes. Do you think, do you think they'll try to get, get them some type of voting right when the voting come around, whether for Democratic or Republic? Maybe. Probably Democratic. No, since they lose no. So the the right whole now. thing is to get access to their labor. That's the whole issue is get access to their labor and whatnot and make sure you don't have any rights for it. So this is about maintaining the status quo, not changing it. Don't be confused. This is not about changing the status quo. This is about maintaining the status quo. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. Let me get caller Miracle 323. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? My name is Jonathan. I'm calling from Los Angeles. Okay, Jonathan from Los Angeles. Wake up. What's on your mind? Remember a few years ago, Lisa Ling's sister, Laura Ling, she was arrested in North Korea by Kim Jong-il. America wasted no time sending Bill Clinton to North Korea to get Laura Ling out of prison in North Korea. But Brittany Griner is still in prison. Joe Biden and that ski wee, you know, that same sorority that killed two black chicks at Doc Wilder Beach back in 2002. They have not done anything to get Brittany Griner out of prison. Make sense of that. You make a very good point in that regard. It's amazing some of the things that happen as long as the folk being affected aren't black. Thank you very much for giving us a call tonight. That's why you have to have these reminders. All the Biden butt kissers will sit up here and try to have you believe in that we're getting some great and wonderful thing. Then when you explain, when you finally do expose that, no, we're not getting anything. They say, well, you know, we still need to vote for him in your way right there. So, okay. Let me get caller from area code 929. You're on live with the Black Channel. What's your name? Where are you calling from? Okay, call of America code 929 is hooking up their Radio Shack CB kit. We're going to go ahead and let them finish that there. They are throwing everything at the wall right now, hoping that something sticks. They are throwing everything out there. And we all know what this is about. This is about having the ability to come back in a couple of months and in a couple of years. They're hoping that you will forget now what I'm telling you. Just like reparations in H.R. 40, they're hoping that you will see H.R. 40 and just assume well, they're going to do something about reparations now. And then you find out, no, this, is, this has nothing to do about achieving reparations so these are things that they're doing now for the purposes of confusing you for the purposes of confusing you into thinking something's getting done and then they're going to come back in a couple of months or a couple of years and they're going to tell you oh look we're getting some more done again while we did some things for black folks don't worry they're going to roll out bowling ball martin fresh from the buffet and he's going to sit up here and tell you well you know no 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 they did do something for black folks that's going to be rolling. All y'all who are da- d- 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 down on b- 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 Biden, y'all need to stop that b- 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 bulls. He's d- 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 doing a lot for us. He's done plenty for black, b- 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 black, black, black folks. So just mark my words, they're trying to set up these straw, these weak, pathetic arguments. They're trying to set them up now. 
They're trying to set up these arguments now. They're trying to set these things up now so they at least have some symbolic gestures they can point to. Why, take a look at HBCUs. Notice they're trying that one now. Well, take a look at what they've done for HBCUs. Really? There's not a single HBCU in America that you can compare to an Ivy League. Now they're trying to go even further. While they, they've been cracking down on police departments, they haven't done a damn thing to police departments. Well, take a look at this. They've indicted Breonna Taylor's killers. They didn't indict them for killing her. They've indicted them for everything except killing her. They indicted them for everything except that. And I would like to put that in a little more stark relief for the rest of you here. I'd like to put that in a little more stark relief. Because just in case anybody had forgotten here, if you want to know how the West was won, and if you want to know how change was achieved, it was achieved by people getting out here. And if somebody tells you that we have to have an election to get things done, if, you, if they told you that we have to have an election to get things done, I just want to remind you of something here. There's a reason why we are saying that, you know what? We don't have to follow the game plan as given by the Biden butt kissers with them telling you, well, there's only one way you can get things done. Actually, there's more than one way to get things done. You see, while Breonna Taylor's killers has still been walking the streets, we went to alternative means to get folks' attention. We went to alternative means to do that. And lo and behold, just remember what happened here a week or so ago. Oh, what do you know? Same Vice News. What do you know? Just a reminder for you. All the cops involved in George Floyd's murder are now going to prison. All of them. All of them. This is just back on July 27th. All of them are going to prison now. Didn't require the president, the Department of Justice, or any of that other garbage. Didn't require any of that. Didn't require an election. The b -b 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 Biden b -b 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 butt kissers are going to sure be m -m 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 mad over that. It didn't require any of that. Now, it required a whole lot more than it should have, but let's remember, it didn't require any of the hoops and hurdles that they told us we got to go through. All the things that they told us when they killed uh, Mike Brown, when they killed uh, Trayvon Martin, all the things that they told us when they killed Tamir Rice, all the things that they said couldn't be done, remember? Oh, it couldn't be done. It couldn't happen with Geronimo Yanez. Oh, you couldn't do nothing. Then, but they sure as hell went after Mohammed Noor and it didn't require any marching. When they put Mohammed Noor in prison, it didn't require any marching, protesting or any damn thing else. A couple years later, George Floyd and it took burning down half the city of Minneapolis. So they're letting you know, no, there's a war on you, black folks. There's a war on you, and we're using the judicial system to execute that war. There's a war on you. There is a war against you. And what they told you is, well, if you can get the right politicians elected, maybe we can bring some of that heat off of you. If you can get the right politicians elected. And we said, eh, we got an alternative strategy. We, we got another way that this can happen. We got another way that this can occur. No student loan incentives, no playing around about this other stuff. We got a different way of taking care of it. And what do you know? We got more progress and more results doing it our way than the Biden butt kissers with B -B -B Bowling Ball Martin and the rest of them have been able to achieve. Maybe that's because their way isn't intended to actually achieve anything. That's something to keep in mind also.
We're going to go ahead and wrap things up for you all here tonight. I want to thank all of you here for joining us. Big shout out here to everyone who has contributed to support tonight's program here on PayPal or Cash App. So Grind Time, Jughead, and everybody else here, thank you very much for your support tonight. We appreciate that. If you are new here to the Black Channel, welcome to the Haven of Intelligent Black Thought. We do this every weekend. Definitely glad to have you all with us here. Click that red subscribe button. Click that yellow notification bell. We're in the process now of trying to get things straightened out with our, my main channel, but I also want to grow this one here as well so if you're listening to tonight's program here no the black authority ain't gone has not gone away at all make sure you click that red subscribe button so you can join us every and every time and if you haven't been to our website blackchannelfilms.com you want to go there and check out our groundbreaking best-selling documentary work 7 a.m gentrified race war all available on dvd on amazon go to blackchannelfilms.com join us on blackchannelfilms.com thank you to all of you who showed up here tonight thank you to everyone who supported the program and And this concludes tonight's broadcast of The Black Channel. I am your host, your brother, your humble servant, The Black Authority. And until next time, my brothers and sisters from around the world, remember, eat this, drink this, sleep this, think this, breathe this, feel this, live this, love this, everything that all of us will ever be. Black first.